Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Adrian Monk, and I'll be moderating this uh, press conference this afternoon here at the Dead Sea. Um, it's a great pleasure to introduce uh, Mr. Yerin Kaufman, Mr. Yossi Vardi, Mr. Muni Masri, Mr. Samir Hulile, and Mr. Riyad Kamal. The forum has been hosting business conversations for a very long time, but in this case, um, it's been a privilege to host uh, two communities. Um, this is their press conference, and I'd like to begin with opening statements from Mr. Vardy and first Mr. Masri. Thank you, Munib. Thank you, Adrian. Uh, first of all, it's uh, really a pleasure to be here on these uh, circumstances. There is no need to go into the agony and the issues between the Israel and the Palestinian people. This thing is going on for 45 years. As I said, and as I will say, I celebrated half a year ago my 70th birthday, 1967, when all of this began, I was 25 years old. It's 45 years now. Most of my life, I lived in the shadow of this conflict. My three kids were born into this conflict, and same, same happened with many, many Palestinian people. And unfortunately, this situation is going on and on and on, and the biggest risk that we begin to, to treat it like a chronic disease. We don't, we begin to lose hope that uh, it can be solved, and though everybody agrees that it should be solved. I met with this fine gentleman for many times through the recent years in international gathering. Every time we met, he caught me by the hand, and he told me, the two of us are cursed. This is how we say, the two of us are cursed because we have to, we are not doing enough to resolve it. And if we are not putting our effort in trying to resolve it, then the two of us are cursed. He frightened me. Now, all of us understand that the end of the conflict can be defined only by the leaders. Civic society, whom we are representing here, can come with gazillion peace initiatives, but it's up to the leaders to sit and to find the painful and courageous compromises which are needed in order to bring peace and dignity and security and justice and prosperity into this region. So Munib and I decided to try and to assemble relevant portions of the civic society which will focus on two things and two things only. We would like to support, to encourage, to trigger the leaders to go into resolving this conflict while we are saying to them that this is their responsibility to forge and to define the solution to it, and we would like to provide a very strong and clear voice of the civic society that we are supporting it, because we saw time and again when the difficult processes begin, you hear the voice of the extremists, but the majority is always silent, and we believe that most of the people, Israelis and Palestinians, want to get an end to the conflict and are willing to pay the price which it will take. It's not going to be easy, but we believe this is doable. During the last one year, we worked together diligently. We had over 
20 meetings, we mobilized a lot of goodwill. We were blessed that the World Economic Forum continued, continued its long, long time commitment to embetter this region and they provided us with a neutral and honest platform to bring the people. We were able to gather hundreds of business people, civic society leaders from the left, from the right, religious, secular, people with different persuasions and opinions, all of them are united by their yearn to two-state solution. And today we are announcing the existence of this group and we make a commitment and a pledge to continue to find a solution for the two people who are living between the Jordan and the Mediterranean. Enough is enough. Too much tears were shed by mothers. There is no, almost no family, Israeli family or Palestinian family, which didn't suffer. You may call us naive. You may ask us what is new. You may have left hope, but we are cursed. We are going to continue to pursue it. You may be skeptical. As I said, everybody has the right to be skeptic. Nobody has the right to be scenic. We have in our group the best and the bright of Israeli leaders. They came here not to do business, not to talk about cooperation. They came to promote the two-state solution to get the two people into some kind of modality that they can work together. And then prosperity and justice and dignity and security will come. We are talking to you. This is not an easy <laughs> task. We didn't come to a press conference. We come to beg, to ask, to plea, to get your support for this effort. Thank you. Mr. Mazur. <clears throat> Uh, I will try to speak in Arabic and English, but I will read a statement and then I will translate whatever I can. But I will take uh, questions in Arabic and English. Uh, we are very happy to have all of you. Thank you for coming. It's a great day for Palestine. I think I'm not going to repeat uh, what my friend uh, Yossi Vardi said. But I can so كمل وحاول إنه نكمل بعض للموضوع هذا ومعنا الإخوان سمير والأخ العزيز رياض لكي نعطي الرسالة اللي إحنا عم نشتغل عليها أو المبادرة اللي نشتغل عليها أولا نحن هنا لكسر الجمود في عنا شيء اسمه مفاوضات وبدنا نحاول إنه نرجع نرجع نكسر جمود هالجمود اللي حاصل في المفاوضات فقلنا مبادرة كسر الجمود هي نداء عاجل للتحرك للقادة وذلك من أجل إنهاء الصراع وفق المرجعيات المتفق عليها بين القادة السياسيين وإنقاذ حل الدولتين هذه المرجعيات هي الشرعية الدولية خارطة الطريق والمبادرة العربية اللي عنا إياها وفي كمان لا علاقة للمبادرة بأي حل اقتصادي أبدا مبادرة كشف الجمود هي جهد تقوم به شخصيات قيادية أهلية ورجال أعمال من فلسطين وإسرائيل قلقون من استمرار الجمود على الصعيد السياسي. This will translate 
a group of civic, of business people and civic group from Palestine and from Israel, they put their heads together and said, we've been silent for a long time. We are, we are, and this, they, what we, they call us the silent majority. We're not silent anymore. We're going to say our opinion in order to have a better life for us, for, grand, for our grandchildren in the future. Uh, it's, it's an honest, it's an honest uh, uh, initiative. initiative. It's a very honest initiative that it's really what you hear, what you're going to have. There's not no ambiguity in it. We didn't go the first time to listen to the world, or to hear the Palestinians say, كفا. Enough is enough. كفا. We need to get rid of the people, and we need to get rid of the people, and we need to get rid of the Palestinians, we need to get rid of the Palestinians, we need to get rid of the Palestinians, we need to get rid of the جاي اللي هي عاصم عاصمتنا في القدس وحل عادل ومتفق عليه حسب قرار 194 في المبادرة العربية يعني all this all this we agreed with Israel I mean our القادة قادتنا agreed on this with the Israelis so we hope that with this هل 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 الأشياء الأساسية اللي حكيت لكم عليها هي اللي منقول إنه لازم نرجعها على طاولة المفاوضات ومنها نبدأ الحديث وإحنا مش مفاوضين أبدا ولكن من نقول إنه هذا رأينا في الموضوع فيا والواقع إنه اللي والأخ يعني في عنا إحنا الأخ أبو عمار اللي قاد قاد الحركة السياسية وقبل في أوسلو ب 22% وقال إن بدي سلام الشجعان وإحنا من نطبق سلام الشجعان والأخ الرئيس أبو مازن ماشي على خطاه وأبو مازن بقول إنه أنا بقول إنه ما بروع المفاوضات إلا إذا فيه وقف للاستيطان ومدة زمنية للمفاوضات وإحنا من أيده مية في المية في هالشيء هذا إنه ما عنا شيء عليها ولكن بدنا سياسيين يقعدوا مع بعض so as they need to sit down together the politicians to iron all these details it's not for us بس احنا uh, we, our worries is because of the status quo we don't want the status quo we, want it to, we don't want it to stay we want to leave the status quo and have the two parties engaged engaged in a very useful dialogue we've been يعني uh, we've been trying to break this impasse for the past year. Now we hope that we have arrived. I think uh, the Israeli side and the Palestinian side are very honest in their appeal because they want the break the impasse, they want to break the status quo, and they want to have the two parties to sit down and negotiate a useful negotiations. We think the Palestinian side, we have start negotiations from 90 from uh, um, since the end the since 1999 we reached to the final stages and from 19 1999 till now we did not move we want to move we want to move in accordance with al marjaiyat al asasiyat al qadir falastiniya bil ittifaq ma hukumat israel la anna al munazzami المنظمة اعترفت في إسرائيل وكان في بروتوكولات كثيرة وبدنا نرد نرجعها ونحث to push all the parties to engage in a real real negotiations <تصفيق> المبادرة لا تروج إلى أي شكل من أشكال التعاون الاقتصادي في ظل الوضع الحالي السائد في ظل الاحتلال <تصفيق> والظروف غير الاحتيادية والظروف الاعتيادية إنه المبادرة لا تتعلق بالمكاسب الشخصية أو المصالح التجارية وإنما تهدف إلى كسر الجمود <تصفيق> We don't have any personal gains you see in his party or us <تصفيق> We have no personal incentive except the care for, for 
المشروع الوطني فور اور مشروعنا الوطني احنا بجانبنا بدنا مشروعنا الوطني حسب حسب ما رسمه آه الاخ الرئيس ابو مازن ناشين عليه حسب ما رسمته المنظمه التحرير بس هذه مش إننا نفوض فيها فمتروك لهم احنا وي wanted to work together we want to give you a true story so don't listen to any اشاعات ما تفكر شو الاشاعات اللي بتسمعوه هو اللي بتسمعوه هو اللي بتشوفوه وهذه النيه فيها ما عندنا شيء مخبى ما عندنا شيء نقوله في المفاوضات المفاوضات تترك للجانب السياسي لحد هلا ما شفنا اي تحرك من اي جانب وهذا متروك سياده الاخ الرئيس مع طاقمه السياسي يفاوض بس احنا بنقول في ثوابتنا السياسيه ثابتين عليها ثابتين عليها شكرا ثانك يو Thank you very much. We are, we, are, we are very fortunate to be with this group. I have all the trust in this group, all the trust. Can I get a sense in the room of questions? We have about 10 minutes for, for questions. So um, we have some uh, microphones. Can we start at the front, lady at the front, um, gentleman's side, and we'll work backwards as quickly as possible. Can you state your name and your news organization? Sure. My name is Tova Lazaroff. I'm from the Jerusalem Post. You said you wanted to trigger the leaders to um, end the conflicts. And I'm wondering if you could give us specific details about what your plan will do. You've outlined the problem, but not the details. OK. And maybe David, trigger, can we? Maybe trigger is uh, too, too strong. We want to support the leaders. I don't think we have to trigger them. They know the issues. I'm happy to tell you that a group of us, which represent all the, all the different views, in the, not all maybe, but most of the different views in the Israel society, met uh, with Prime Minister Netanyahu on Thursday on the eve of going here. We had a very constructive, long, and positive, and candid meeting with him. And he gave his uh, welcome to this initiative and I don't think that we have to trigger it. I think, I think it is there. What we have to do, we have to provide the politicians with a feeling that the biggest or the greatest part of Israel is supporting of these negotiations because as we know, the negotiations are not going to be easy. So we are there to encourage, to support, to express our view and that we want to, uh, that uh, our voice will be heard. Yadin, do you want to add something? I would say that uh, it's important to understand that this group represents roughly 300 of the leading business people on both sides. And this is the first time that such a group has come together, uh, built relationships of trust and understanding, and is trying to uh, use its experience in in getting things done and doing business uh, to help the leaders as they move towards reaching a negotiated solution. Uh, we're hopeful that with, uh, with the goodwill on both sides, uh, the leaders can resolve all the thorny issues that uh, undoubtedly still need to be resolved. Any, Sami? Okay. Can we take David and then the gentleman at the back? And we'll take a couple together if we may, just to keep Make sure we hit the just some specifics. Right David Horowitz from the Times of Israel. You you represent a, a great um, weight of business leverage potentially. I assume I don't know. Maybe you can give us a figure of what percentage of the uh, Israeli and Palestinian business world you represent. That gives you leverage, and and you don't want us to be cynical. And that's what we do for a living. But we'll try not to. Um, how are you going to bring that leverage to bear? You're giving a press conference. You're expressing um, hope, but but. People need to be pressed, otherwise they don't tend to move. Okay, and can we take the gentleman behind? Uh, hi, my name is Hani Hazaymi, I'm from the Jordan Times. This morning, uh, 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 the president of Israel, Shimon Peres, gave a statement and he talked about the uh, two-state solution. Soon after the statement, the Israeli government criticized him for saying that. And then Saibor Orekat was asked also about the initiative and he, sa he said, I know nothing about this initiative, we're not here to launch any initiatives. So with all due respect with what you just said, how can you progress and convince the leaders if they are already criticizing uh, any initiatives? 
or the statements the, uh, that had been just made. Okay, and the gentleman just at the back. Yeah. So. Uh, just quickly asking Mr. Masri, he touched upon the economic peace. I mean, Israel has been promoting economic peace for a few months now. Do you think it's a trick to perpetuate the occupation? How can you, would this work in the absence of a political settlement that ends the conflict? بالعربي الترويج للاقتص للحل الاقتصادي او السلم الاقتصادي هو حيله لتمديد الاحتلال وللهروب من مستحقات السلام الحقيقيه في غياب حل سياسي لانهاء الصراع هل هذا ممكن شكرا يعني انا جاوبك اه لك موجه آه. شكرا طيب هقول لك خذ مني بالضبط شو بحكي لك ما في اي شيء اسمه حل اقتصادي بالنسبه لنا أن قضية قضية سياسية بامتياز بدنا حل الدولتين مثل ما مثل ما بقول مثل ما قالت القيادة الفلسطينية ومنظمة التحرير بقراراتها الأساسية حل الدولتين على حدود ال 67 والقدس عاصمة للدولتين فلسطينية وإسرائيلية وحل عادل مثل ما تكلمت عنه المبادرة العربية حل عادل ومتفق عليه حسب قرار 194 من هيئه الامم المتحده بضمن المرجعيات اللي موجوده في منظمه التحرير ما عندنا شيء اقول لك ما عندنا شيء نضيفه عليه غير انه احنا اقنعنا الاخوان انه في شيء شيء اسمه اخلاقي ما يعني في احتلال وما في كمان عمليه اخلاقيه وهم عارفينها تماما اخواننا في الجهه الاسرائيليه هيك الكلام ما عندنا شيء نقوله غير هالشيء هذا. Can, can I add uh, to that to that response, which I didn't fully understand, but in any case, I did understand the question. Uh, breaking the impasse is not about uh, trying to create economic peace. Okay, we don't believe that economic peace is possible. We don't believe that uh, business alone will bring peace. Peace requires the politicians to act, and we're here to send a message to the politicians that we believe it's urgent that they act uh, to bring a two-state solution under terms that will be agreed between the leaders. We're not here to tell them what those terms are, okay? At the same time, we do believe, I think I speak for everyone, that once there is peace, the potential for our two peoples and societies to work together is tremendous, and that extends to social, it extends to economic uh, development of our two societies and of the region generally, whether it's in tourism, whether it's in information technology, whether it's in agriculture, whether it's in energy. So I think there's tremendous potential in working together, but we understand that that potential uh, will be realized once our leaders bring us peace. Um, <coughs> since we have started working on this since June last year, 2012. We have had conducted different meetings with political leadership in both sides. Together we have met President Peres. They have met Netanyahu. We have met Abu Mazen, Samir Hlele. And uh, we have met together Congress people. We have met Secretary Kerry. So basically, we have conducted a lot of meetings. In particular, I have to, uh, to say that the document that we have concluded for today was discussed at least 20 times, at least 20 times within the Palestinian leadership side with Dr. Arikat and with others. So we understand that this is not a political initiative for the leadership. This is a draft. We, we understand that this is not their initiative, it's our initiative. It's private initiative. So we don't necessarily wait for somebody to say, I support. All what we are saying is that we have done that in full coordination with the leadership. We know exactly the limitation. We know the sensitivities. Uh, and we have done that properly. And uh, the call that we are talking about speaks about just the following. You have to understand. We speak about the two-state solution. We speak about the final status issues. We need to end the conflict. We don't speak about managing the conflict. We don't speak about any cooperation. We, we particularly uh, uh, speak in, um, vocally 
that only a political solution will open up for any economic cooperation between the two sides. It's written in, in the document. So we understand your concerns and we are exactly in full compliance to your concerns. However, this is our initiative together and it has nothing to do with any leadership in any of the sides, but it's done in full coordination. Thank you. Can I, can I just uh, answer Mr. Horvitz first? question how this community will will uh, use its its clout its influence i don't know what the word to use you know marshall McLuhan said 40 years ago that the medium is the message you as a journalist and editor i'm sure familiar with it i think what we saw today it's pity you were not able to be at the ballroom in the moving peak, we can paraphrase on this saying and say the meeting is the message. We saw 300 of the most influential people which contribute to the economy of Israel and other countries in a way which is hard to replicate, and same with the Palestinian, coming and spending a joint day in trying to think what we should do. There are all kinds of ideas. I don't want to go, to go now into the details, but I'm suggesting that the fact that these people stood up tall and said, enough is enough. We want to see what we can do in order to support the ending on the, of the conflict. I think this thing alone sent a very clear and distill tone to the politicians. And I think they will take in, in, into consideration. To the gentleman from Jordan, Israel is a very democratic country, as you know, and it's being, it's being uh, characterized by the fact that in Israel we have 7.8 million prime ministers, as Ben-Gurion used to say, you know, and everybody is entitled to his view, and as you know, Israelis are not very shy expressing their view, and everybody has a view. At the end of the day, there are somebody who sits at the driver seat, and he take painful decision. It happened with Begin and Egypt. It happened with Rabin and uh, Jordan. It happened to a certain extent with the Palestinians, and the time we believe, and I, I believe that these this, this leaders also believe that we have to find somehow to put an end to it. What we are saying, we are going to support you. We want it. We will support you, and we will mobilize other people, maybe some of the people here in the room, who will add their voice to this, to this thing. Samir, can I bring you? Just in Arabic. Uh, المبادرة أخوات وإخوة ليس لها أي علاقة بأي موضوع تطبيعي المبادرة ليس لها أي علاقة بتعاون اقتصادي على الإطلاق يعني مش بس على الإطلاق مذكور في البيان المشترك أنه ممنوع هذا الكلام نحن نهدف أن نشكل لوبي ضاغط على القيادة الطرفين من أجل العودة إلى المفاوضات مفاوضات ذات مغزى مفاوضات لا تؤدي لإدارة الصراع بل مفاوضات تؤدي لحل الصراع وليس فقط حل الدولتين ولكن أيضا حل القضايا الأخرى العالقة حسب الاتفاقيات الفلسطينية الإسرائيلية اتفاق أوسلو قرارات الشرعية الدولية خارطة الطريق إلى آخره ليس لدينا غير اللي بنقولكم إياه هذا هو بالضبط الموجود وهو المكتوب تم ذلك بتنسيق كامل مع جميع الأطراف ولكن هي تبقى مبادرة لنا للقطاع الخاص والمجتمع المدني يعلنها في في إطار الورد إيكونوميك فورم ونحن فخورين إنه هذا الغطاء هذه المظلة الموجودة وافقت وقبلت بالشروط وبالإطار اللي إحنا حددنا في هاي المبادرة. Okay, we see we're running right out of time. We can probably take some very brief questions. Start over there, then that gentleman over there, gentleman behind. Josh Mitnick with the uh, Josh Mitnick with the Wall Street Journal. Can you share with us some of the names, some of the uh, businessmen, who, m women who are part of this initiative? 
We'll certainly be sharing that in a press release at the end of, of this press conference. Um, can I take just the two gentlemen over there? Yes, thank you. My name is Talat. I'm from Palestine. Actually, I would like to ask what is the really new of such initiative? This is my first question. Secondly, is it possible to see the Israeli private sector pressuring on their government? At the same time, the Israeli private sector exporting billions of dollars to Palestinians every year. Every year. The Israeli private sector investing in hundreds of industrial zones, uh, industrial settlements in West Bank. Is it possible? Can we imagine that the private sector will make the pressure in, in to, the, to, to the Israeli That's government a, a good question. to solve the question? Thirdly, please, no, no, it, I if, the leaders, we, is not, if uh, the leaders is not part of this, so what for? Thank you. Okay, so thank you for that. And gentlemen behind. سؤال السيد منيب المصري بما أن المبادرة كما قلتم غير مرتبطة ب يعني بأي شيء سياسي من من حولنا كم يشكل القطاع الخاص أو المجتمع المدني من الطرفين الذي سيشكل هذا اللوبي الضاغط على القيادتين كما قلتم من ناحية من ناحية أخرى برضو للسيد منيب المصري بالنسبة لموضوع التطبيع لأنه بتعرف كم حساسية العالم العربي والمجتمع الفلسطيني الموضوع لو لو وضحت أكثر كما وضح السيد سمير بال يعني بشكل أوضح حتى يكون واضح إنك إعلام لأنه هيك فهمناها من الصباح على الأقل. ما هو مفهوم غلط يعني مع الأسف وإحنا بنضلنا نغلط حان الوقت إنه نقول كلمة الحق إحنا منمر بأسوأ أوضاع الأوضاع السياسية في المنطقة في حراك سياسي ولازم نكون صادقين مع أنفسنا ومع إخواننا ومع أولادنا ومع أحفادنا أول واحدة أول واحدة سؤالك كان قديش من شكل أنا بعتقد بين خمسين لستين في المية من الجي دي بي بين التنين يعني بين فلسطين وهذا هذا عدد لا بأس فيه وتنامى بدأنا بشيء قليل وبعدين نمشي عليه وما بدنا نهدد فيه ولكن إحنا بنعتقد إنه الحل الأصوب إنه لازم لازم يقعدوا على طاولة المفاوضات أبو مازن الواقع بعرف إنه عم بيستنى المفاوض الإسرائيلي إنه يجي من شان يقعد معه هذه هذه الشغلة الأولى الشغلة الثانية أنا بعتقد الأخ سمير حكى عن التطبيع أنا ضد إشي اسمه تطبيع كلنا ما بدناش نطبع بدنا نقول كلمة حق إنه ما في تطبيع إلا بعد الاستقلال الوطني بعد ما فلسطين تأخذ استقلالها على حدود على حدود سبعة وستين قطاع غزة والطفة مرتبطين مع بعض ولها لا لا تقدر إنها تعيش هذا الشيء هذا وحقنا بقامة عاصمتنا وبالحل العادل والمتفق عليه هذه هي البيسك تاعنا ما عندنا شيء تاني هذه ولذلك التطبيع كلنا لا يمكن نشتغل عليه هي كمان هي ما بيشتغل عليه إحنا ضد السات المنز كلها كل كل إشي إشي في المستوطنات نعارضه ونقول عليه أنه غير أخلاقي وغير شرعي ما في إشي جديد يا جماعة إشي جديد أنه فيئنا هالمارد النايم ما كانوا لأنه بيعرفوناش الإخواننا يعني دي إزرائيلي أنا أقول تليو القيادة عنا عملت لجنتين لجنة تواصل لأنه كمان الإشي الأتولي فينا أنه نحل مشكلة مشكلة الانقسام الانقسام الفلسطيني فشكلت الأخ الرئيس شكل لجنة من شان تواصل متابعة إنهاء الانقسام واللجنة الثانية اللي هي التواصل مع الشارع الإسرائيلي لكي يفهم يفهم مشاكلنا أحزاننا في أن مشاكل وكيف كيف بده يصير حل الدولتين العادل حسب المرجعيات موجودة عندنا مفهوم أخي في الجزيرة وأهلا فيك في الجزيرة وأنا من ناس اللي بحبوا الجزيرة أيوة بنحب الجزيرة هذا من شان نكون واثقين من أنفسنا بكل كلمة بحكيها أنا مسؤول عنها okay. I, We're running a little bit out of time I'm afraid folks Samir, can you okay. Just uh, uh, طلعت 
اذا كان بدك العربي ولا بالانجليزي ولا بفرقش طلعت بس اللي بحب اقوله انه المجموعه الكبيره من رجال الاعمال الاسرائيليين اللي شاركونا معظمهم اغلبهم لهم شغل دولي شغلهم مش محلي مش بس مش في المستوطنات ولا حتى في اسرائيل نفسها معظمهم في قطاعات ذات طابع دولي عشان هيك احنا مش هم بيمثلوا القطاع الخاص الاسرائيلي طبعا في جزء من القطاع الخاص الاسرائيلي بيشتغل المستوطنات طبعا في قطاع خاص اسرائيلي محلي بصدر للضفه وغزه بدون شك ولكن اللي موجودين معنا اغلبهم اللي قبلوا يوقفوا هذا الموقف معنا هم ناس عندهم موقف سياسي واخلاقي بيختلف عن مواقف هذولاك حتى في الموضوع الاقتصادي قالوا هم ما بدهم يشتغلوا معنا وبدهم يبنوا بزنس علاقات بزنس معنا الا بعد اقامه الدوله الفلسطينيه فاحنا اعتبرنا هاي المجموعه هي رديفنا هي اللي بدنا احنا نشتغل معها مش اي مجموعات اخرى لها علاقات او لها طموحات اخرى gentlemen gentlemen just yeah. in the middle there yes. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I have a question to Mr. Vardi. Is this initiative just for the Palestinian businessmen? Do you have any relation like this initiative with Arab businessmen, especially after the Israeli news that there is a representative in one of the uh, Gulf Arab country? Thank you. I didn't follow. If it includes other Arab business people. Uh, no, th this initiative is, uh, was initiated by Munib and myself, and we are dealing with the with the conflict between the two the two people you know we think this is a big enough issue so we are not trying to expand the role i yearn and pray and hope for the day that we will be able to have very good relations with everybody but i think if we are able to do a little contribution to this one then i am I am happy, you know, for the rest of my life. This is enough for me. Then I will leave the rest to some to some other people. I, I must say, I, I, I must say that I don't know how to to convey to you how sincere is this is this yearning. You know how much everybody wants. You know we got the people, the best people left there companies and came here today, they started at five o'clock in the morning, they came here just to show their identification. You ask for name, Mr. Wall Street Journal, you will get it in, uh, in, the, in the press release, but we should have here, unfortunately we lost him on the way to the hotels, Mr. Shmuel Muli Eden, who is the Israeli president of Intel. And Intel employs in Israel 8,700 people. He came tall and standing and said, I'm here. I think this is very important. I want to add my voice. And so we have tens of the best and the brightest companies. It's so pity, Mimi, that we, we I lost should, him. I so, just say so I can understand, as I said, I can understand the skepticism, because 45 years passed and we didn't do much. We have done something, but we didn't do much. But I think that cynicism has no place in this area. And I'm saying again, we need your help. We think you owe it to yourself and to the Palestinian and Israeli people to come and help us in this initiative. This is very important. Maybe we will fail, maybe we will fail, but at least, I don't think so, I am quite optimistic, but okay. if, if we fail, we at least will say that we tried as hard as we could, and every week we have another Israeli and Palestinian and international people, we have there a very impressive group of international people who are joining this initiative. Just time for one one I, last I, remark. I just want to add and one Mr. word Kamal. to the question. Of and, Mr. And, and Mr. Kamal, yeah. As a Palestinian from the um, diaspora, um, I found in this initiative under the WEF umbrella a way to voice um, my own personal opinion to express and say that enough is enough of this um, status quo that is not taking us anywhere and I found that in this initiative, 
without interfering, without actually um, getting into the details of what the negotiations are going to be like, just the fact that we Palestinians in the diaspora are urging the Palestinian Authority and the Israeli government to sit and negotiate enough is enough. We've now reached the point where we are sitting on a volcano that is going to erupt and it is the situation is going to get worse for the sake of our children and our grandchildren and in order to help us in the diaspora to come and invest and participate in bringing a better life for our people in the area that they should sit together and do something about getting a peace concluded between the two nations once and for all. Enough is enough. I'm going to just bring in... أنا كفلسطيني في في الخارج عشت معظم حياتي في الخارج ولم يكن لي أي مساهمات في الداخل ما عدا مساهمات العائلية ومساعدات الإنسانية هذا غير كافي ضميرنا غير مرتاح لغيابنا عن الساحة الفلسطينية وبهذه المبادرة وجدنا وسيلة لنعبر عن أنفسنا إنه نحن جزء من هذا الكيان الذي يجب أن يتوصل إلى حل سلمي عادل يؤمن معيشة فيها فيها احترام للإنسان الفلسطيني للمستقبل لأولادنا ولأطفالنا ولأحفادنا كفانا هذا المراء الحياة المريرة التي عشناها في في الستين عام الماضية. I just want to call on Yadin Kaufman to close. Before I do, I just want to uh, point out that the people involved in today's talks will be in the plenary hall for the breaking the impasse session. So that session will be broadcast live. So you'll have a chance to see who's been uh, involved in in these discussions, um, and uh, and they'll be they'll be there for that uh, for that session at the end. But Mr. Kaufman, there was a question. Of Sorry, there was a question about uh, what's new about this initiative, and indeed there have been other initiatives. I just wanted to add a couple of quick comments. First of all, this is the first time that you have today already 300 of the leading business people, the largest employers in Palestine and Israel, who empl whose companies employ tens of thousands of people. It's the first time that they're coming together to raise their voice about the importance and the urgency of reaching a two-state solution uh, and having the leaders do that uh, as quickly as possible. Secondly, it's, we need to make clear, and I think this is what's one thing that's unique about the group, we are not promoting a specific agreement. Uh, we haven't laid out any terms of how the agreement will look. We're leaving that to the elected leaders on both sides. We want to encourage them, we want to support them, but it's not our role to dictate the, uh, or to lay out the terms of the agreement. Finally, uh, we have the backing of the World Economic Forum, uh, which is an, an extremely important international organization. Uh, I believe this is the first time it's lent its name to an initiative aimed at addressing the uh, Palestinian-Israeli conflict. And we believe that that can be a tremendous source of support as we go forward to us and to our leaders. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to deliver these gentlemen to an appointment that um, they need to keep. So without further ado, there'll be a chance, I'm sure, as um, things continue for further questions. Thank you.